Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Brogan and I do lots of lifestyle, homey vlogs, travel videos, and all sorts of fun content here on my channel. So please subscribe if you're not already. Anyway, welcome back and welcome to this video on things I've learned since buying a house because it's actually been one year since we picked up the keys to our first home. And I, I actually can't believe a whole year has passed. It's gone so fast. And Benji, my boyfriend and I have been reminiscing and talking about all the things we've learned and how the last year has been for us um, since buying the house and what we've achieved. We're so grateful and feel so proud of ourselves. And I have so much I wanted to kind of chat about and share um, because it has been a whole year and there are so many things that I think are important to maybe highlight if you're new to the process of buying a house or you're considering it. I have actually made a whole video on the house buying process, getting a mortgage, what that was like for us. So if you wanna check out that video and you haven't seen it already, I'll leave a link below for you. One of my most informative videos and a video that I'm really proud of because I still get messages to this day saying how much it's helped some of you. So thank you so much for your support. So it's just gonna be chatty. It's actually a Saturday afternoon. It is currently five to five, in the evening and it is tw the 26th of September and we actually got the keys to this house on the 30th of September 2019 so coming up to the one year anniversary which makes me so proud and yeah I wrote down all the things that I thought would be fun to talk about so grab your cup of tea I actually do have <laughs> I'll show you <laughs> I've actually got a rum and coke today so cheers cheers to one year in this house and we actually did officially move in uh, in February. We've not officially been living here a year, but we've had the keys for a year. So we, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But yeah, six months of renovating and then the last six months of living here. And I love it. I'm in a really nice mood. And yeah, can't believe we live here. It's crazy. So anyway, let's start. So the first thing, number one, is that it doesn't have to be a really stressful experience. Everything I'd ever learned and heard about buying a house was that it was really, really stressful. Now, don't get me wrong, <laughs> there were times that it was stressful. There was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of waiting around. There was paperwork and documentation we had to sit and read for hours. There were delays and the owners wanted two months between exchange and completion, which is the day that we signed the contracts and the day we picked up the keys. And that's really long um, for the UK average. So there were moments that I felt frustration, I felt stress, but actually the whole process overall was fairly smooth and what I was expecting. So I guess I expected the worst and ended up getting kind of the best scenario. We had no chain, they had no chain, the sellers. And so that did make the whole thing easier. But yeah, it didn't have to be stressful. Like I didn't, I thought it'd be really stressful and it wasn't actually in the end, so. That's the first thing I learned. The second thing was getting a broker, a mortgage broker, was possibly the best decision we made. We did actually go to a bank and speak to a mortgage lender in the bank. However, everyone recommended speaking to a broker. Now, the one thing to learn is that some brokers do charge for their time, but most brokers actually take a commission from the mortgage lender that you choose. So that's how they earn their money. So they don't actually cost you anything. So our mortgage broker was amazing. She was so patient with us. She really provided us with so much information and advice. She gave us kind of her personal opinion as well, which I really valued because she's seen so many people, you know, go through this process. So she knew what was best for us. And also getting recommendations from people you, you know, if you're in that process. So my brother actually recommended his solicitor and what I heard was that solicitors take ages and that they're difficult to work with. And again, that was another misconception because our solicitors were actually really smooth. I don't know if it helped that we were also very good with our communication as well. So every time they sent us paperwork, we would read it, sign it, or provide them with what they wanted. And then I would actually drive down to the solicitors and hand deliver it, which just made everything so much quicker rather than sending it back and forth in the post. So yeah, getting a mortgage broker and recommendations from friends and family was huge and, and just made the whole thing so much better. So I would recommend that. <laughs> the third thing that I learned was putting down a bigger deposit towards our mortgage wasn't actually necessarily better. So when we were going through this whole process with the broker, she taught us that there are like bands. So if we put down 10%, this is how much we'd have to pay per month. If we put down 15% deposit, this is how much we'd have to pay. If we put down 20%, this is how much. And the difference per month 
wasn't that much. So it was financially better for us to put down a lower deposit and keep the money that we'd saved towards renovating our house. So we basically, but it gave us more flexibility and more options when it came to looking at houses because once we had our mortgage, we knew that we could then afford a house that needed a little bit of love and we actually wanted that. We didn't want a new build, we wanted something that we could make our own and it all kind of worked out in the end. But that was something I really didn't know. I just thought the bigger deposit, the better your mortgage would be and that's not always the case. So that was something I really learned. The fourth thing that I learned is that when deciding how much you can afford, for me, I don't have a monthly uh, salary like Benji does, my boyfriend. So I am self-employed and every month I can earn different amounts of money. So I had to be really, really strict and serious with allowing myself flexibility in my bills so that I can afford to save and afford future expenses because when your life changes, things change like we got a dog so that has increased my expenditure if you like so allow yourself room in your monthly budget don't max yourself if you earn a thousand pound a month don't get a mortgage that's obviously a thousand pound a month you're not going to be able to afford that so you wouldn't get the mortgage in the first place but you know what I mean like don't max yourself get something that's within a sort of good range for you where you still have room to play with with the money to be able to save to be able to afford other things if that makes sense um, and I'm pleased that I did that I was really quite certain what I could definitely afford and then go from there <laughs> I hope that makes sense the fifth thing that I learned was that I'm actually really glad we kept the process to ourselves to our closest friends and family we didn't really tell a lot of people that we had bought our house we really only told the closest people around us so i didn't tell anybody online we didn't make the whole thing public until we got the keys and it was really nice because that two months just allowed us to enjoy the process look forward to getting the keys that day and then it meant that we didn't have loads of people asking us for updates all the time and and that was added pressure in that respect like having people question what's happening with the house, what's happening, what's the news, and it just was nice to keep it to ourselves, and that was something that I'm grateful that we chose to do. Number six is you actually need insurance before you even move in, which I didn't know. I did not know you had to have insurance before you moved. We had to have buildings and content insurance to make our mortgage sort of valid, to agree with the terms of the mortgage that we had to be insured before we'd even moved in, which was so surreal because like the billing details was like our old house, but yet we were insuring the house we didn't even own yet. Weird. Um, but yeah, that's something you have to work on. And then the next thing that I wrote down is that some bills are better paid upfront and some are better paying for monthly. So for example, just like if you were to pay for your car insurance, you know you get the choice obviously monthly or annually. Some bills like our home insurance we saved quite a lot of money if we could afford to pay the whole thing for the year annually so we've done that again this year but things like council tax you don't save anything by paying for the whole thing in one go so it is better to pay for it in installments per month again that's something that you learn over time when you're figuring out what works for you and managing your bills but yes if you can afford like a pot of money like everyone said to me like you need your mortgage you need all the fees like the solicitors and all that and then you need like money for the renovations and money for the moving in stuff so buying furniture and things but another pot of money that's quite handy is that flexibility for paying for bills up front a few hundred pounds here and there to be able to afford things it's just helpful like tv license was another one we paid for up front for the year stuff like that number eight <laughs> It's an obvious one. The renovations slash the redecorating process because a lot of people kept telling me that I wasn't renovating my house. Renovations is when you literally like rip a whole room apart and then build it back. And some rooms we didn't do that. So some rooms like the bathroom we completely renovated and the lounge, other rooms we just redecorated with like new paint and fresh carpets. But overall, the whole house from top to bottom needed doing, including the loft and like the front drive and the garden, like everything needed new paint, new carpet. The, thing, the only things we really kept were like the structure of the place, the flooring and the kitchen. Everywhere else, we pretty much 
um, refreshed, if you like. So yes, it was a long process. I thought we'd be in by Christmas. So we got the keys, like I said, 30th of September. We started the works on the 1st of October. And I thought three months to the end of the year, that should be all right. But actually in reality, it took six months. And when we thought about it, we were doing it ourselves. So we didn't have like builders in during the week. So it was just Benji and his dad. And then me and my mum helping do walls and painting and stripping wallpaper. And we mostly only did that in the evenings here and there and then on the weekends. So in reality, it wasn't three months every single day of work, if that makes sense. So a lot of people were like, blimey, you're taking ages on doing your house. But really we were taking our time and I actually really enjoyed that time. I enjoyed seeing the house change slowly. It gave us a chance to really think about our choices. We didn't feel rushed. There was no pressure on our side to move in straight away. We were very lucky to be living with Benji's dad and he wasn't pressuring us to move out. I'm sure he wanted us to like, you know, move along <laughs> eventually, but bless him, he was so accommodating and, and came and dedicated so much of his time to make this place really amazing for us. Um, and Benji is an electrician, so he rewired the whole house and you know stuff like that takes a lot of time that you don't see so yes it took a lot longer than we thought and everyone told us it would take longer but there were so many snags in that process like we bought tiles from B&Q and then they discontinued the tiles and we had to drive to Portsmouth which is just over an hour drive for us to get the last tiles in stock in the closest B&Q that had them that was quite stressful and um, when we were doing the bathroom we ordered um like different elements from different companies and one particular company was just so bad that the the service was so bad they deliver stuff and it was missing like major parts and elements and yeah there were moments where I just thought I'm gonna have to just breathe through this because we got this it's gonna be fine um like our toilet ended up costing us double because we bought the toilet and then we didn't open the box until like two months after we were ready to install it and then by then it was too late to, to like get a refund or return because too much time had passed until we realized that something was missing and oh my gosh there was just so much to it but actually deep 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 down in reality I really did enjoy the whole sort of process of it it was really fun and Benj and I would come over here on the weekends we'd eat so much takeaway food and we were so exhausted but we were just beaming with pride because it was ours number nine is you're never ever going to be finished ever feel like you're finished um obviously living here day to day we feel like we've finished the major side of things but we already have started uh work on the garden benji has started cutting down some of the decking we want to get the kitchen completely redone next year so we're currently saving for a beautiful brand new kitchen and new flooring throughout we wanted to wait until we got a dog and the dog was settled and now we have bonnie in our life and she is happy here we kind of know um, what we need, what we want, what will work best for us. And it's so exciting. I feel like we can go through all that, that process again when we get the floor in the kitchen done. The house will feel so much different when we do that. But uh, yeah, the utility room, the downstairs bathroom, kitchen and the garden all need to be sort of redone. But at the moment they're very livable and beautiful. Like we're, you know, we're very lucky with what we have, but yeah, it definitely needs freshening up and I'm putting our stamp on it. There's so many things I want to do. Like I went to Ikea recently. I did a whole Ikea come shot with me if you want to go and check that out. But looking at the kitchens and deciding like what floor, what colors, what units, what sink, what style, what's most practical and functional and just there's so much to it but you'll never ever feel like you finished which is something I have quickly learned. Number 10, I wrote down like, managing bills because the pressure of obviously having a mortgage is something I always used to worry about, but actually the managing the bills and managing the mortgage has felt really natural for us. It's felt like such a normal thing. And I don't know, maybe because we did it when we were ready and it, I, I have this weird gut feeling about things and life just kind of like guides you in a way and the house just came at the right time. And now we're here and we've been living here for a while now and we've been managing the bills and managing everything it just it doesn't feel like I don't feel stress all the time about it like I thought I would be and then number 11 is getting a joint account that we dedicate just to bills has been amazing for Benj and I so we already had a bank set up that we were using for joint things so buying things for the house because we lived together for two years before we moved in here you know there were things that we'd buy supplies for around the house going out for meals 
buying things we put on that joint account but then when it came to getting the house we decided to get a whole separate account that we could use for paying fees the mortgage itself and all our bills and it's been amazing to be able to manage that and see it we both pay into it every month then we see all the transactions that come out and then we can work out roughly like do we want to pay a little bit more in and then save some together so we kind of are working on that together and it just feels like we're a team and it's not messy it's just super neat in one place and that's something that both of us will find works really well for us and we still have that other bank that we use for day-to-day -day transactions food food shopping bonnie's sort of bills and things as well so yeah it just it just works number 12 is uh no one really taught me the nightmare of trying to get planning permission for anything so luckily we're not actually trying to you know extend the house or do anything crazy we just want to do a really small change we we already have a dropped curb where we park our car on and off but we have two cars and so my car is currently driving on to um a bump and i basically am smacking my car against the road every time i drive on and off it we basically want to extend the dropped curb and it has taken us three months so far and every time we get a response back it has been a nightmare every time we speak to the council they either need something else that's missing they try and find ways to delay the process or we have to pay for more things if you need planning permission for something it's stressful really stressful number 13 is something we both sort of didn't realize we'd be doing is that we keep thinking of ideas for our future home so we know that this is actually not a forever home we're really happy here and i do envision us being here for a good few years in my head i'm thinking five years benji thinks maybe longer but i actually think it really depends on our lifestyle and what we like and don't like about where we live right now we have every box ticked and we're super happy here however there are moments where we think oh that would be really nice and we call it the future home like if we are ever in a position to get somewhere else we would like x y and z if that makes sense so we don't have a garage we don't have a shed these are things that we would love in the future, in the future house. So you, we always have like inspirational ideas or things that we we like the look of, or we like the idea of, but they just don't work for our current space, if that makes sense. Number 14 is you will love giving your friends and family a tour of the house and you will never stop giving tours because like well especially for us we moved in uh, a month before lockdown hit so a lot of our friends and family didn't get the chance to see it once we had finished and so still to this day we've not given everybody a tour and even though i have youtube videos up showing the whole place our friends love to come and see it and the thing a thing the thing as well is not only do they want to see it but we love like showing it to them because we're so proud and they're so proud of us and it's this like mutual excitement like they're so excited that this is our home and we like talk about doing games nights and summer barbecues and we never got the chance to do a housewarming party which is something i really wanted but obviously that wasn't possible during a global pandemic um but yeah there was it's just such a nice feeling when your friends and family are really proud of you and you want to show off your lovely space it's just lovely and i do love it when they come around and we go so we've done this we've done that and some of our friends are in the same position as us so they've also recently bought a house or they're in the process or they've completely built their house from the ground up or something like that so we love like comparing what they've done and what works for us and and it's just so exciting and they're like oh we'll recommend you our flooring guy or we'll recommend you with the guy that did our garden or whatever i just love it i don't know if i'm clearly in that stage i'm in my mid-20s and i'm like that's the stage of life i'm at but yeah i'm excited and proud and the last one i had to end on was that it's still very much like a pinch me every single day we wake up with so much gratitude often benji will look at me well, we're sat on the sofa all snuggled up and he'll go we own this house and i'm like i know <laughs> it's crazy isn't it because we just are so proud and it's really bonded us as a couple i feel closer to bench than ever before because we've done this together it's our thing it's our project and we have each other's backs for everything it makes me emotional but like i i just feel so so chuffed for us and proud that it's something we have achieved and it was a big sort of goal for us both before we met each other then we met each other and we had this mutual goal and this mutual sort of idea of what we wanted and it just all worked out in the end it's ours 
and we did it together and for that that's pretty special so on that note I think that's everything I wanted to share with you on things we've learned thank you so much for watching this video if you are in the process of buying a house or a flat or whatever right now or you're moving let me know in the comments and let me know if you've learned anything from this video if you enjoyed a little chit chat with me um, I'd love to hear from you and yeah I hope you have a lovely rest of your day thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one bye